Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I just wanted to go over a quick and dirty explanation of how a 4x4 uh, keypad matrix works. And uh, bear with me, because uh, I've got a lot here to discuss, and I'm doing this all in one take, so again, please bear with me. So what you'll notice on the left is a standard 4x4 keypad matrix, and this is just a schematic for it. There are four rows on the left, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. And there are four columns on the top, call 1, call 2, call 3, and call 4. Now, I've got an algorithm on the right, uh, but before we do that, I want to talk a bit more about the keypad matrix. Uh, SW stands for switch. You'll notice on the upper left there's SW1, and to the right of that there's SW2, all the way down to SW16. And you'll notice underneath each switch there's a number, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F. I want you to ignore those uh, letters and numbers because certain keypad matrices have different uh, have different numbers and letters on them. So we're going to be talking about these switches by their SW numbers, SW1 to SW16. Now they're, the only thing you need here to really work with a keypad matrix is a microcontroller. Uh, you could use a PIC. I use PICs. Um, Arduino if you want. Uh, stamp, ARM. Uh, even Raspberry Pi. Now what this schematic doesn't have is uh, pull-down resistors and we're going to need those and I'll talk about those a little bit later but first of all let's go through uh, the basic algorithm. What you want to know first of all is that we're going to be configuring our columns as uh, outputs on our microcontroller so we're going to need four outputs for our columns and four inputs for our rows. We're going to uh, set our rows to inputs. So as on the top, the basic algorithm at the top, set column IOs, input output ports as outputs, and set rows as inputs. So again, four, four of each. Now, at the start of the algorithm, this isn't in programming language. This is just a written algorithm. Set call one. Set means five volts. So set the column one output to five volts high. Uh, let's just for, just for uh, we'll we'll talk about this a little later. But clear means zero volts. Clear means zero volts. Set means high. Set means five volts high. So set column one. So in the upper left, that uh, column one line has five volts on it. So basically, if we press SW1, SW5, SW9, or SW13, five volts will go to either row one, row two, row three, or row four, uh, depending on which button you've pressed. So in software, check if row one is high. So if you, if while the uh, column one uh, output is high, and we press SW one, then row one will see that five volts, and we can process that in software. So if so, if row one is high, go to instruction for SW one. Now we'll get to those instructions later, or examples of those instructions, uh, but let's say that that button is not pressed and our software has not detected it. If not, check if row 2 is high. So we know if row 2 is high if the SW5 button is pressed. If so, go to instruction for SW5. If not, check if row 3 is high. So if row 3 is high, it's because SW9 has been pressed. Remember, only call 1 is, has been set. Call 2, call 3, and call 4 are all clear. They're low. So, if so, go to instruction for SW9. If not, check if row 4 is high. Now, this, is, this will be our last check for, for this set of instructions. Uh, if row 4 is high, go to instruction for SW13. If not, clear column 1. So, when you clear column 1, all of the columns are at 0 volts. But as soon as you clear column 1, or uh, column 1, set column 2. Now we'll be doing. Now we'll be checking row one, row two, row three, and row four again in software. But we know that column two has been set. So let's go again. Uh, check if row one is high. Now, if row one is high, when you've got column two set, then the SW two button has been detected. If it has been detected, go to instruction for SW two. If not, check row two again. If row two is high. Uh, then SW6 has been pressed and go to instruction for SW6. If not, 
uh, check row 3, which will be, and if row 3 is high, it's because SW10 has been uh, pressed. If so, go to instruction for, for SW10. If not, check row 4 again. Uh, if high, it means that SW14 has been pressed. If not, or if so, go to instruction for SW14. If not, then what we're going to do is we're going to clear column 2, and we're going to set column 3. So now column 3 is high. Now we follow the exact same steps, steps for column 3 and column 4, and this is how we detect this is how we detect which button is being pressed. Now, in software, you would have this running really, really quickly, perhaps a couple hundred times a second. So it's constantly checking. It's uh, setting and clearing certain columns and checking uh, row 1, row 2, row 3, and row 4 uh, whenever you've got that specific column high. And that's how you can differentiate using uh, eight different I.O. ports, 16 different buttons. Now, you can use the same principle on a... Uh, 4x3 keypad matrix or an 8x8 keypad matrix. You just need more I.O. ports. I imagine a lot of you are uh, <clears throat> more familiar with Arduino uh, or even Raspberry Pi than PIC, but what I've done here is I've uh, created two example subroutines to be called when uh, a button is pressed. I've done two sample routines that are pretty much identical for SW1 and SW9. You can call these routines when the button, relative button is pressed. Now, for uh, if you're going to use all 16 buttons, you'll have to make 16 little routines like this, but I've just made it two. So using the, uh, the instruction set that comes with PIC in an assembly code, I've made, a uh, again, two little routines. Uh, for SW1, when SW1 routine is called, uh, move LW 0x01 means move the hex hex uh, value of 01 into the working register. Working register is just a, a temp register, register that you use for uh, all sorts of different things when you're working through the instruction set. Move WF port B means move that value in the working register to port B. And port B is an 8-bit, uh, and, and at least on the PIC uh, 18F1220, it is an 8-bit uh, port that you can configure as all all of them as outputs. So if I move 0x01 to port B, that means that the least significant bit, uh, the rightmost bit, will be turned on, and the remaining seven to the left of the least significant bit will be off. Uh, and my comment there is move that value from the working register to the 8-bit output port, port B. Uh, after we do that, call a delay. You'll have to make a delay routine for as long as you want. There's, the reason I didn't put a delay routine in here is because there's so many different ways of going about it. Uh, it's not as simple as it is with the Arduino where you can just say delay bracket 1000 milliseconds. You have to create a delay routine. And once that's done, you can just return to where it was called. When you call uh, a subroutine, uh, the subroutine completes what it's doing and then it returns to when it was called. Uh, for SW9, we move uh, move LW 0x09, uh, so we move the hex value of 09 into the working register for temporary storage. Then we move that value from the t uh, working register to port B, so that will be our 8-bit 8 8 -bit output port. And now we can put LEDs again on our 8-bit uh, output port, and this will put the uh, binary equivalent of 9 to that output port. We call a delay and we return. Uh, I realize that might be a little bit ambiguous, especially if you are not uh, familiar with binary and hex. Uh, if you are, this should make a little bit more sense. Maybe I'll make a secondary video to complement this so I can actually show you on a pick. This, va this video is specifically for um, a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, it is linked below if you are interested. In any case, uh, the example subroutines aside, you'll notice on the left, uh, on the uh, rows, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, those are again, again connected to input lines on our PIC or our microcontroller and I've connected uh, 10k pull down resistors that pull the uh, line voltage to ground through a protective resistor. You can use 1k, you can use 10k, I wouldn't go much above 10k. Uh, and what this does is uh, if you don't have these connected what's going to happen is uh, the lines are going to be floating. Now what floating means is that when no button is pressed, you've got nothing on that line. So you're not seeing 5 volts, you're not seeing 0 volts, you're seeing an undefined value. So it could uh, the uh, input could read either or. So you want for that line, these lines to read by default 0 or clear. 
And you can do that by connecting these 10k ohm resistors to ground on each line. And when, say, uh, column 1 is set and SW1 is pushed, we will see 5 volts on the on row 1. And that pull down resistor uh, will have no effect, obviously, I mean, relative to when you press that button. It will see high when you press SW1, and it will see low when you let go. So those pull down resistors are, are very important. And I've actually put a, a text on the lower right here labeled the resistors that you can go through for a bit better of an explanation. Uh, sorry for stumbling through this a little bit. I, I hope that it was somehow useful to you. Um, I've never been the best at public speaking, so I hope that you were able to get something out of this video. Uh, if I have time, what I'll do is I will write a quick piece of code that uh, shows you kind of an example, and I'll put some LEDs at the output of a port of port B on, uh, say, a PIC 18F1220, and I can show you this. But I can't, don't have time for that today, so uh, I will try to get to that a little bit later. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them below. Take care, guys.